My name is Jackson Bassett. Uh, this is our farm out in Lovell, Wyoming. And it's a family farm that I run with my dad. Our operation consists of uh, about 500 acres irrigated. And uh, I also do a cow cap operation um, in Wyoming and Montana. And uh, the crops we grow consist of small grains, corn, barley, oats, and sometimes wheat to uh, silage and silage corn and alfalfa hay as well. We have some hillside areas that we can't farm, obviously. <laughs> uh, we have some treed areas, wooded areas, a lot of grass that is uh, affected by the soil quality, just too rocky or not enough moisture to get any, any crops growing. So that's why we just have a little bit of grass growing, not much usually. And it just becomes, sometimes we have some willow areas, riparian willow areas. So we like willows a lot, cows like those. It seems to be good wind breaks for them, so we allow them to stay. Our non-crop plants are definitely beneficial to us in the fact that we use them for our cattle where we need them for calving in the springtime. We can put these cows in an area of that is 50, 50 acres probably and we can keep, keep a good eye on our, all of our mother cows and know that they're contained and we can also feed them separately. Also the fact that we're not paying other people for this pasture is very beneficial to us. Actually, for our water quality, um, some of this water we have is coming off fields that have just been tilled. A lot of sediment in that. And that sediment has to go through these uh, right, grasslands that we have, and so it filters out that sediment. And has actually made some rocky soils that we have turn into actually pretty good quality grass that we have sometimes growing plenty of grass. And so it's actually very, very beneficial on our fact that we get a lot of grass coming from that runoff soil. We have a local bee producer, honey producer, that stores beehives on our property. And so actually with our hay acreage, so if we ever need to spray insecticides on it, we will spray it with a spray coop rather than doing with the aerial spray because that is not as good for the bees. And we'll also uh, we'll try to irrigate some of our, uh, our non-crop crop land to grow some grass for our cattle just for grazing in the springtime. On the non-crop habitat, we can definitely see we have some really invasive weeds that sometimes we can't just let go. Uh, sometimes we need to just spray them. We'll have sometimes a daughter, some Russian thistle, lots of things that just need to be controlled. That way they don't spread onto the crop or land itself. Some of our land also has an easement right through it and is actually the stuff we're sitting in now. We obviously try to make some of it more presentable. We don't want just a rock patch out there. We have BLM ground and they have a right of way to come through here to go check out the habitat and so they see it and I, I don't know what their perception is, never heard back from them, but if I had the resources, the one field would the one pasture would half of that would become a pivot field. But there's really no big changes to this just because what it is now is just as beneficial to us in the springtime as our cropland is during the summertime and fall.